Good morning, Resurrection Life family and friends. We are one week away from our 15th anniversary. I am literally standing on the grounds. I am just so excited and thankful at how God just continues to bless us, how he has kept us for 15 years. Please share with your family, please share with your friends. The address is right now coming across the screen. I am so excited to see you next week. We've been away from each other for so long and next week we'll be right back together once again. So please, 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 please share this with your family. Please share this with your friends. You don't want to miss this. Our 15th anniversary next week here at Resurrection Life Community Church. God bless. Hello, our LCC family. We're so excited about all the amazing things God is doing in our ministry in this season. And while we are excited, we should understand that it's going to take the hands and efforts of all of us to fulfill our mission. If you would like to support our ministry during this transition, feel free to give to our cash app at dollar sign DRLCC. We thank you in advance for your contribution. God bless. I would just like to say happy Mother's Day to all the mothers sacrificing everything for us children. Uh, thank you for putting clothes on our backs, food on our table. You just cannot imagine and put up the words for how much mothers do for us children, how much they sacrifice. I just like to thank God for the mom I have, the caring mom, that she takes care of me and my dad. She takes care of everybody else, makes sure they're doing okay, and yeah. First thing I want to say to you is thank you. Thank you for worrying about me and Brandon. Thank you for caring about me and Brandon. Thank you for always trying to make me and Brandon smile, even if, it, even if it's for a picture. Thank you for trying to make me a better person and a better man, and thank you for everything you've done for me. Happy Mother's Day. I want to give a big Mother's Day shout out to the incomparable First Lady Joyce Joyful Medlock, um, I honor you, um, I love you from the bottom of my heart. Um, I wouldn't be here physically, spiritually, emotionally without you. Um, so I hope that you enjoy this day and you feel as special as you are. We would like to take this moment and wish our mother a happy, happy Mother's, Mother's day. day. You are such an incredible and an amazing lady. There ain't nobody like my mama. You set the standard and are the example of who we aspire to be. If I am half the woman that you are, I would consider my life to be blessed and successful. Your strength, guidance, and kind-heartedness is what influences me to be the person that I am today. Not only are you our mother, but we are honored to have you as our very best friend. We love you and hope that we make you proud. You have been. And shall ever be. The Queen of our Hearts. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. Good morning and happy Mother's Day to all of the mothers across the world. Happy Mother's Day to my mom, my grandma. But this tribute is a special tribute that goes out to my wife, Clarissa. Happy Mother's Day to you. I love you from the bottom of my heart. I know Kyla does as well. Um, we really just want to express how much we love you, honor you. And thank you for your sacrifice, all of your efforts that you put in to make our house a home on a day-to-day -day basis. We love you. We honor you. And I pray today that you feel the love because you truly deserve it. Happy Mother's Day. Dear Mom, I thank you for being in my life. I thank you for giving me food to eat, clothes on my back, and a roof on my head. If I could repay you right now, I would. Thank you for loving me and caring for me. Thank you for getting stuff I don't need. Thank you for being by my side during tough times. 
Thank you for helping me with stuff I need help with. I want to say happy Mother's Day to my wonderful, beautiful, and strong mother. Um, you have been the epitome of um, you know, what a mother should be um, from the very you know, first moment that you know, I've come to know you as my mother. You have been nothing short of miraculous, um, even in the, the disciplines and the lessons and everything um you have been nothing short of exemplary um and even more so since you know dad's passing i have, have seen a strength um in you like no other i have seen a bravery and a courageousness in you like no other um and that is to be commended um so we definitely i definitely honor you on today um and i thank you that i have the best mother in the whole wide world love you Mother's Day to my beautiful wife Mia. I wanted to personally thank you for your endless sacrifice that you contribute to our family every every single day. Um, there's no way that I can be who I am and there's no way uh, that our little Layla can be who she is if it wasn't for you. Uh, so again, thank you uh, again for who you are, what you contribute to our family. Uh, we definitely love you and we appreciate you on today. Happy Mother's Day. Good morning and happy Mother's Day. We honor all the mothers across the world and everyone listening. We love you, we thank God for you. And it's a special time to just reflect back on just how important a mother is across the world in all of our lives. We can truly just think back on, from the day we were born until now, from birth, nursing, growing, the good and the bad, mama has always been there. And even in the hard times, mama has always been there. When we were in the good times, mama has always been there. And so I thank God for mom. And I was going back and forth trying to think of a song that would be befitting for this occasion. And I put myself in the seat of a mom. From a mom's perspective, what would she be saying in this moment? And I can truly say that every mother has a reason to thank God. Amen. If you know that to be true, can you just say amen in the comments? Every mother has a reason to say thank you because God has truly made a way. And who more to feel the pain of struggles, of hard times, than a mother and God has seen us through it all and so today we're going to sing a song that just says that he has made a way and every mother today can truly say that they're standing here today because God has truly made a way
can say that. You made a way. You, you made a way. When our backs were against the wall and it looked as if it was over you, you made a way. And we're standing here only because you made a way. Come on, how many can say this? You moved mountains. You cause walls to fall with your power. You perform miracles. There is nothing that's impossible. And we're standing here only because you made, you moved mountains. You caused walls to fall. It was your power. You performed miracles, and there is nothing, absolutely nothing that's impossible. And we're standing here only because you made, and we're standing here only because you made Mama is standing here. Only because you made a way. Wow. Come on, I just dare you to think back on all of those hard times. All of the times where the kids were acting up. All of the times where the money was tight. All of the times where you just had to show up with just nothing but faith nothing but what you know what you know what you know to encourage those when you needed encouragement yourself come on how many of you have been there before hallelujah come on can we just lift that up you made a
and strongholds are breaking. Strongholds are breaking. Blessings are coming. Blessings are coming. And we're standing here only because you made. And we're standing here only because you made. And we're standing here only because you made a way. Good morning, family of God. I bid you Godspeed, and I want to acknowledge and say Happy Mother's Day to every mother who has spent their life of sacrifice and serving into another life and birthing what God has put in your heart. Whether or not you are a natural mother, a godmother, a grandmother, a great grandmother, or a mother who came and took up the need of another soul and another life and bore the burden and the blessing of raising that life. I want to say thank you, especially to my mother, and say happy Mother's Day to my mother who is still alive at 85 years old, and thank you for your service in life for me to bring me to this place and all those mother figures in my life. God bless you. Let us look unto the Lord. Holy Father, we come to you this morning just to say thank you for this day. We thank you, Father, because if it had not been for you on our side, where would we be? Father, we thank you for watching over our life and bringing to pass, Father, what you started in us, Lord, and bringing us to this moment, Lord. It is sacred, and Father, we honor you. Bless this day. Bless every mother and every heart of a mother, and bless every heart that may be grieving for the absence of their mother here on earth. We pray that you would take up, Father, that mantle, and Father, and that we would take up that mantle and to care for one another. Be glorified on this day, Lord, and we love you and we bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. We honor our pastor. We honor leadership. We honor the, you, the people of God, and just say thank you, Lord, Father, for my children and for my grandchildren and for all those who made and realized motherhood in my life. You refresh me, and I praise God for that. I want to direct your attention to Genesis, the 18th chapter, verses 14, for our text this morning. The word of the Lord says, is there anything too hard for the Lord? At the time appointed, I will return unto thee according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. Tell your neighbor, we are carriers of the promise. Carriers of the promise. History records the life of Abraham as being chosen by God to become the father of a new spiritual race. Spiritual seeds were planted in the garden of his heart from God that were to bring forth from his obedience a wonderful era, a new era, the future church such as we are now. Abraham carried that seed of promise and, and Sarah received that seed and so we are. All this from the seeds of promise. Genesis 12 chapter verses 1 through 4 records, Now the Lord has said unto Abram, Get thee out of of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee and I will make of thee a great nation and I will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing and I will bless them that bless thee and curse them that curse thee and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken unto him, and Lot went with him. And Abram was 70 and five years old when he departed out of Haran. Four times in four verses, God said, I will. Know this, a covenant is an agreement between God and man. It's either conditional or unconditional, based on God's will. There are seven, several covenants in the Bible, but five covenants are central for understanding God's redemptive plan for humanity. He made a covenant with Noah, with Abraham, with Moses, with David, and in the new covenant. 
The covenant he made with Abraham was a permanent, unconditional covenant. It was a binding agreement between heaven and humanity, between God and man. God told Abram, I will make your offspring as the dust of the earth, so that if one can count the dust of the earth, your offspring also can be counted, from Genesis 13 and 16. In between, the promise and the fulfillment can cause great stress if we act on human reason to help God. God doesn't need our help. In between this time, Sister Sarah decided she helped God out and offer her maid to Abraham for him to sleep with so she would get pregnant. And Abraham welcomely agreed. They thought this path would bring about the promise. Who does that? God didn't ask for a surrogate mother. He came to them. He called for them. He sanctified them to carry his promise. Sanctify your temple. Block the doors and gates to your bedroom. God has not called you to an open marriage or to an open covenant. God said that we are carriers of the promise. Don't let delay detour you from God's plan. God works from his plan, not from our plan. God, and if we get in a way, your detour can cause unnecessary problems. Your drift can cause unnecessary pain. Your flesh can send unnecessary people to peril. After 15 years of waiting, Sarah was still childless. Abraham consulted God. He prayed to God. He went to God asking, what, shall I remain childless? Shall I remain childless? God reiterated the same thing that he told him before. From your loins, the promise will come. From your loins, the promise will come. He said from their loins that their family line, not from their household, from their family line, the promise will come forth. Promise takes time to fulfill. Tell your neighbor, promise takes time to come to fulfillment. God is working his plan. Trust him and trust the process. Ten more years passed and then promise came. Scripture records in Numbers, the 23rd chapter, verse 19, tell us, God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. Has he said and will he not do? Or has he spoken and will he not make it good? Covenant carries the promise. Covenant communicates the plan. Covenant contracts the carrier. Covenant conveys when and who's coming and what's coming. My dad was a mail carrier. Their motto was the mail must be delivered. Whether rain, snow, heat, or ice, the mail was delivered. They're, they wore a standard uniform that identified them as mail carriers. What's your Christian identification? What's your Christian ID? They had their signature bag that contained the mail. Each had their designated route and time for delivery. You knew what time to expect to mail. We can't say that so much now. Even our dog knew when to expect the carrier and get revved up knowing that a stranger was going to come up on our step that didn't live in the house. He started, my dad started work early in the morning and finished late in the afternoon. He couldn't leave until all the mail was delivered. That sounds like our natural and our spiritual life. It's getting late in the day and our mail must be delivered. What are you doing with the promise of life inside of you? What are you doing with the witness of Christ inside of you? Jesus said in Matthew's 28 chapter verses 19 and 20, Go ye therefore and make disciples of nations. Baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. That takes time. We must deliver the good news of Jesus Christ. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. 2 Timothy 4 and 2 admonishes us. Deliver it to every person and to every place you've been assigned. Deliver the certified mail that God's covenant is loving, is lasting, and is legally binding because of the shed blood of Jesus Christ on the cross for the sins of the world. Tell them this delivery is like no other delivery package that has ever come before. How Jesus got up three days after he was buried with all power in his hands. His new covenant is fair, it's equal, it's inclusive, and it's binding. When we received his covenant, we received the transfusion of the blood of Jesus. His blood signed, his blood sealed, and his blood delivered us from everything sin enslaved us to. 
Our promise is eternal life, and that's some kind of promise that's not to be taken for light. We are pregnant with possibilities. Can you tell your neighbor, I'm pregnant with possibilities. The Lord said in Jeremiah 1 and 5, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Before anything came into existence, it was spoken. Watch our mouth, watch our tongue, watch what we release. In Genesis 1, verses 1 through 3, God shows us the power of creation via the power of his tongue. He tells us what wasn't, what was, and what became. It reads, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, let there be light. And there was light because God spoke the word. And every creature, every creation designed to give birth, whether an insect, an animal, or a woman, or a man. Stay with me, men. The time for receiving the seed and the egg before birth is called a gestation period. A woman's gestation period we know is nine months. A camel is pregnant for 13 months. An elephant is pregnant for 22 months. And some sharks are pregnant for two to three and a half years. My God. But guess what? Look at this. The black alpine salamander is pregnant for two to three years. Their lifespan is only 10 to 20 years. So one third of their life is spent preparing for the new life only to hand it off for somebody else to nurture. We've got to trust God in that process. Trust God. And thank God that our natural pregnancy isn't that long, thank you, Jesus, but our spiritual pregnancy could be. The Apostle John, one of the 12 disciples, one of the inner circles and friends and the disciple that Jesus loved, the scripture referred to him that way, was called by Jesus to be his disciple. He labored in early ministry, witnessing and converting souls to the kingdom, and was dispatched in his latter days, long after his conversion, for another ministry to be birthed through him. This gestation period lasted for three years. He was isolated from every human contact to the Isle called Patmos to receive vision, revelation, and prophecy that will become the final vision and book of the Bible, the book of Revelation as we know it. Psalms 92 and 14 says, they shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing. You're never too old to birth something for God. Ask Sarah, how long has it been since you accepted Christ? What is your spiritual womb birthing? What are you birthing for the kingdom? Are you still in your gestation period? How long has it lasted? We should be either giving birth. Nurturing a life that has been birthed or pouring out into another soul that is on life support. It's not how long you live, but how impactful is your living? What are you carrying? Our time on earth has been predetermined. Don't waste the time. Use it for development. Don't withhold what God has given you by your nurture or neglect. It will either live or die. They have and it must go on to realize their purpose. Ecclesiastes, the third chapter, verses 1 and 2, says to everything, animal, insect, woman, or child, or ministry, to everything there is a season, and a time to every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born, and a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck up that which was planted. Tell your neighbor, we are carriers of the promise. Are you, you, you uh, ask yourself, and ask God, what am I carrying? What are you carrying? Is it for God or is it for you? Is it for your namesake or is it for his namesake? What is the gestation period? How long do I have, God? Psalms 39, 4 and 5 says, Lord, make me to know my end and the measure of my days, what it is that I may know how frail I am. Behold, thou hast made my days as a hand breath, and my ages as nothing before thee. Verily, every man at his best state is altogether vanity. Selah. The culture is more concerned about carrying a pistol rather than carrying the word of God. What's your concern? Is it culture or Christ? There's a set time after the seed has been planted for that seed to develop, for that seed to grow into maturity, and for that seed to prepare for labor. Are you ready and prepared for labor? Labor is travail, and travail is persecution. It's rejection, which is an announcement to you and me that it's time to give birth. It's time to come forth. It's time to deliver. Are you delivering? Are you carrying? Are you aware? The coming of age is at, is at hand to full maturity.
authority to the ministry in the new ministry for more souls to come forth or to a new assignment. God has predetermined it. The promise of fulfillment for the believer, for the carrier, is the harvest of the fruit, the birthing of new converts, the addition of new and more laborers into the vineyard, and our interest into eternity. We celebrate when the vision has manifested, and that's worth celebrating. That's the lifeline. That's what we live for. That's the way we long for. God, we do so much that's not task-oriented that we can't see the labor. We can't see the fruit. But there comes a time that God will show you and give you the fruit of your labor what God has started he will complete tell your neighbor he will complete it what was once a vision what was once a spoken word a conception is now a life and that life needs to be tended to what are you carrying we must develop before delivery. We must endure discomfort, delays, and setbacks. We must trust the promise when loss comes. We must remember that lives are dependent on you. But God has not put so much stock in us that if I don't do, he won't choose to use another person. Whether the storms and changes in the body of Christ while the spirit of God is perfecting the church. Just as words reach our futures before we do, so do the plans for our life. They reach our belly before they reach our mind and our heart. When you know better, you can speak with definition that shapes the promise over your life. Proverbs 18.21 says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So watch your tongue. Watch what you release. Watch what you put in a grave before it's given, given life. What are you eating to nourish the promise you're carrying? Are you killing the promise of purpose with your words? Come to the creator of life. Let him show you what his plans are for you. Ask and it will be given unto you. Press down, shake it together, and run it over for you to digest and run with it. Time is swift and it's fleeting. Live to love what God has promised to birth in you and nurture it. We are forever becoming. It's not a one-time hit. It wasn't when my mother birthed me that, that, that God's promises were fulfilled. It was just the incubation stage. Becoming is forever a process. We must become what God wants now and what God wants next. There's a next for you. Tell your neighbor this isn't it. There's a next for me. But I've got a labor to enjoy it. I've got a labor to receive it. I've got a labor to handle it the way God told me to. The projection and the forecast is not the culmination. Labor to nurture. Labor to deliver. Labor to enter the rest from the labor to reward. God wants to intimately visit with us as he did with Abraham and Sarah. He went to their tent. He went to their house with two other angels. And the hospitality of a day was when a stranger came to you, you would pull out the fatty calf, not just for your boo, not just for your relatives, but to the strangers. Abraham came and rushed to wash their feet, told Sarah, go cook them the, the fine meat for, for them. That took time. It takes time to nurture lives. It takes time to care. It takes time to be obedient to what God told you to do without bias, without favoritism. Abraham had no idea that this was the Lord Almighty that was keeping company with him. Fulfill your gestation period and deliver what God is looking for. As we do unto others, it will be done unto us. But when God gives us promise, you better bet what God has started, he will complete. Abraham waited 25 years from age 75 to age 100 for, for God, can I say for God, to bring forth the promise that he gave him. He did not manufacture his own purpose and his own prophecy for the future. God gave it to him, and it was up to God to bring it to pass. We are Abraham's seed, the children of faith. So don't grow weary while working and waiting. Watch and wait and work and worship but know our redeemer lives and he's coming know what you're carrying and deliver the promise god put in your heart i pray something has been said to stir the gift that's inside of you to make you get into the presence of the lord to ask god to seek god and then to get on but with the business of doing what god has called you to do on this mother's day 
Thank God for birthing us. Then thank God for your mother and your grandmothers, for all those souls who had a hand in your life to nurture you, to tell you when you were wrong, to tell you that God has more for you, to tell you that I haven't forgotten about you. Those who are lost in the streets right now, who Satan is vying for their soul, don't give up on them. God gave them to you. So you labor for their souls. There may be one who's under the sound of my voice that has not received the love and nurture and development in your yesteryears. But don't look back. You can look up and you can look forward because our Redeemer lives. God died for all mankind. The covenant was for not only Abraham, but the new covenant is what Jesus did for me and you. That all those innumerable seeds were you and me coming down the pipeline in the future for us to receive the love of Jesus, to receive forgiveness, to receive salvation. Will you accept the love of God in your life? This world is not our home. We are strangers and pilgrims passing through. But while we're passed through, this is the get that we need to get. We need to get the love of Jesus Christ, and he has freely given it to me and you. We just have to receive him. What does a prophet a man to gain the whole world and to lose his soul? Get the love of Jesus. Receive his grace, his mercy, his forgiveness. Receive his intimacy and fellowship with you. And I promise you, if you do that all the days of your life, can't compare to your former days. I pray this day, if there's a mother in your life or a mother figure in your life, you honor that woman of God. You honor that woman whether or not she knows God or not. You honor the fact that she didn't abort you, that she didn't leave you on the curb. And if she did, God touched somebody else's heart that lifted you up. But honor the fact that she gave you birth. And honor the fact that God had you in his plans. May God bless you. And may heaven smile upon you is my prayer. God bless you. I don't know how, but you did it. You made a way. I don't know how, but you did it. You made a way. I don't know how, but you did it. You made I don't know why, but I'm grateful. I don't know why, but I'm grateful. I don't know why, but I'm grateful. I don't know why. I'm standing here only because you made and I'm standing here only